Hello from CNN London. I'm Monita Rajpal. This is World Report. Tragedy in the skies on two different continents. We begin this hour in Cuba, where a passenger plane crashed late Thursday night local time. All 61 passengers and seven crew were killed. According to state-run media, there were 40 Cubans and 28 foreign passengers Joined on board. Joined now by CNN's Shasta Darlington in Havana with more on the situation there. Shasta, do we know what may have caused this crash? Well, Munita, that is exactly the big question. Havana. That's what authority. Meanwhile, in Pakistan, half a world away, authorities are sifting through the wreckage of a plane that went down near the city of Karachi. All 20 passengers and two crew were killed. The patients continue into why an engine on a Qantas Super Jumbo failed and shed parts over Indonesia. The airline CEO says maintenance of the A380 wasn't to blame. Alan Joyce says the problem may involve the plane's Rolls Royce engine. Indonesia, Mount Merapi has erupted with renewed ferocity. It unleashed its fury on the island of Java yet again on Thursday morning, killing at least 54 people. Several bodies were found. In Thank you for that. Well, a hurricane is closing in on Haiti, bringing more misery to earthquake victims, many of whom are still living in tents. Let's go to meteorologist Jennifer Delgado at the World Weather Center with more on, uh, on Tomas's uh, strength and where it's headed. Hi, Manita, you're right. Right now, it's located about 200... Fresh from his election bruising, President Barack Obama leaves on a 10-day trip to Asia today. He begins in India, where he will spend three days, the longest stay in any foreign country of his presidency so far. Officials say he is hoping to emphasize ties between the world's two largest democracies. The U.S. president next visits Indonesia, the country where he spent part of his childhood. While there, Mr. Obama will meet with President Susilo Bambang Yudhoyono. Then he heads to South Korea and a G20 meeting in Seoul. Talks are planned with South Korea's President Lee Myung-bak and China's President Hu Jintao. Also on the U.S. Veterans Day holiday, Mr. Obama will speak to U.S. troops stationed there. Japan is the final stop for an Asia-Pacific Leaders Summit. Mr. Obama will also meet with Prime Minister Naoto Khan, Russian President Dmitry Medvedev, and Australian Prime Minister Julia Gillard. Well, coming on the back of the U.S. midterm elections, there has been controversy brewing over the cost of the president's trip. Sarah Sider joins us now from Delhi with more on this uh, $200 million myth. Is that what it is, Sarah? Nobody knows because the numbers are not available to anyone. The video of the apparent collision between a Chinese trawler and a Japanese Coast Guard ship in September has leaked online. The images were uploaded onto YouTube. The video was taken by the Japanese Coast Guard. The crew of the Chinese boat, shown here in blue, uh, were detained after the collision. And that started a major diplomatic row. The Chinese government dismissed the video, claiming it had been edited. Many Japanese companies may be struggling with a strong yen, but Toyota still managed to post a profit in their latest earnings results. The world's largest car maker reported a net income of more than $3.5 billion in the first half of its fiscal year, and that's compared to a loss last year. Still to come, historic vote or foregone conclusion? The ballots have yet to be cast, but there is already a cloud hanging over Myanmar's first elections in 20 years. The elections were not the world leaders like Australia's foreign minister say though Myanmar is having its first election in 20 years, they aren't expecting much of a change after the ballots are cast. Dan Rivers brings us more now from Bangkok. In many parts of Myanmar... You Let me tell you this. Ask any Londoner, including myself, and we'll tell you, a stroll down the city's busiest shopping boulevard, Oxford Street, can sometimes be a walk on the wild side. So... What can the city do to solve this pedestrian congestion? Atika Schubert asks if it's time to live life in the fast lane. And I'm Monita Rajpal, also in London. World Sport is next.